Back around 2007, I didn't realize it at the time, but I was now at the end of a 21-year career in medical engineering. I had loved the job up until maybe the last three years. I really enjoyed the challenge every day, solving problems, figuring things out, working with a really good crew of engineers. But then something inside of me just kind of one day I looked up from all the noise of the machines and I looked around me and it just really hit me that there were no windows in the lab. And it was a very big lab. I would go in around 3.30 in the afternoon when it was daylight. At the end of my shift, I'd drive away and it was dark. I never even saw the sunset. Some people are really into the sunrise. Me, my favorite time of day is at sunset. And I missed it all those years working on the second shift. And I remember I started having this thought process as I was doing my work and figuring stuff out. And I began to think, well, I've got 21 years in this company. I'm getting paid really nicely. The bonuses alone were $30,000. When we had a company dinner, it was a huge deal. In fact, one of the years we had Seinfeld for our entertainment. So we're talking about a Fortune Top 100 company that really treated its, its employees really well. So I basically had it made. All I had to do was show up at work, solve problems, and go home. Now there was a lot of paperwork because we worked under the eye of the FDA, but it was a really great gig. And everybody I worked with had the same plan. Work until age 62, maybe 65, retire with a really fat pension, a company matched 401k, and be on easy street for retirement. But there I was, about 47 seven years old, thinking to myself, is that really what I want to do? Do I really want to keep clocking into this place, making a ton of money, and meanwhile, the world is spinning outside that lab. There's stuff going on out there every day. San Diego Beach was only an hour or so away, and I loved going there. And I looked around, and everything in the lab was either white or pale blue. But I knew that outdoors, there were green trees and blue skies. There were people having various conversations. Me and the guys that I worked with for 20 years, some in and out, I think we had already talked about everything we could talk about. And the realization that time is worth more than money became more than just something you read on a coffee cup. For me, it was my whole new reality. Every day now that I clocked in, I felt I was losing a slice of my life. So I drafted together a three-page resignation letter, hand-delivered it now to the vice president of the company, because what we did took about a year to train somebody new on, and I was considered the grandfather of the department. Nobody else had been there for 21 years. In fact, everybody in the department was either somebody I trained or trained by the people I had trained. So I sat down with the vice president of the company, and I told him, well, here's all the details, but basically... You need to start getting on monster.com or hiring some headhunters because I'm leaving and there's very few people in the country who have experience doing what I do. Now, he didn't try to change my mind, but he did throw it out there. Well, do you realize you're giving up quite the package here? And he says, well, you know, if this is kind of some ploy to increase your salary, we already have set salary guidelines. I said, I know. I'm maxed out. I'm making more than my supervisor. This is not about money. And as I explained to him, I want to go out there. I want to live my life. He really didn't get it. He, there was no glean in his eye that said he understood or had that same kind of drive. So my final night, I bought pizza for everybody in the department. I made sure my station was immaculately clean. So I finished all up. It was after midnight. I was the only person in the department. There was nobody else there. And I took one last look and I walked out and never went back. So then I now was faced with, okay, well, how am I going to make an income? Well, I had already decided to get my realtor's license as well as my financial planner license in the state of California. So I went to school for both of those, took the test, 
passed it, became licensed. So when I wasn't selling real estate, I was selling various life plans, insurances, annuities, and such. And all of a sudden now, I'm putting on a suit and tie in the morning. I'm jumping in the car with a little bit of coffee. I'm meeting people. I'm setting appointments. I'm on the phone. I'm working with a wide variety of attractive women, office women. I'm blazing down the freeway with my favorite music playing. Life was good. And I figured, well, this is my new life. This is what I'm going to do till I retire. I could do real estate at 65 years old. But then the worst real estate correction in history happened. Many of you probably remember it. And you couldn't give a house away. They were upside down. Banks wouldn't do the loans. It was a mess. And meanwhile, even though the financial planning job was fun to do, and I was working with some really great people, the commissions were awesome, but I really didn't feel that looking at the various plans that were making the most money, I really didn't feel that those were the best options for many of the clients that I sat down with at their kitchen table. And so since my entire job description is to look out for their best fiduciary interests, I would tell them, okay, here's such and such option you can go with. But in all reality, the plan you have is fine and you're really not going to come out all that much more ahead switching to this other plan. Even though if they had done that, it would have been a nice fat commission for me. And I finally made the decision, I'm going to walk away from this. I'm not going to do what everyone else in the office is doing. I'm not going to talk people into switching into plans that I know are not in their best interests. But they were willing to do it because there was a big competition in the office who was going to make the most commissions. And I didn't want any part of that. So I walked away from that. So then with the real estate pretty much plummeting down into nothing, over the years, I had part-time been repairing computers. I'd been repairing computers since around 1988. I had already had a computer since 1984. I was like one of the few guys that knew how to do websites or replace a hard drive or get rid of a virus or recover lost files. I was like the only guy, at least in my area. Back then, you were some kind of a, a geek really to know all this stuff. Nowadays, it's pretty common. So I was able to do that. And again, life was good. I had new clients calling me up every day. I'd go to their house. I'd either repair it at their home. I was working for attorneys. I was working at their offices. I had repeat customers, referral customers. I'm driving around Southern California. I had a membership with LA Fitness. Kept my gym bag in the back of the trunk. Anytime I'm on my own schedule, I would just pull in and swim in the pool and enjoy the sauna. Life was great again. So then one day, one of my former real estate friends had hired me to repair her laptop. And I said, okay, you want me to bring it by the office or where do you want to meet so I can give it back to you? And she said, oh, there's this new Filipino restaurant in the center of Temecula. Why don't we meet there? You can give it to me there. We can try out this food. I'm kind of curious about it. So we met there, but I got there before she did. And when I walked in the door, it was literally like something out of a movie. First thing I saw when my eyes adjusted was this 32-year-old Filipina from Cebu who was there helping out her sister's restaurant. Now, I didn't know anything about her. I just was flabbergasted at just how beautiful she was and her demeanor. She was very classy and held herself well. She wasn't loud. She was demure, but very secure in herself. I was so impressed. I ate there every day for five weeks. And over that five weeks, I got to know her. We became at first good friends. Pretty soon we were talking on the phone after she got off work. One thing led to another. And two years later, we were engaged to get married. Now, the entire reason she was in the USA was to get a divorce from her American husband and was just keeping busy at the restaurant just to pass time to help out her sister. So every two months, she would go back. And then I find out she's not just a waitress. She's incredibly wealthy. And not because of her husband. He was only getting about eight, nine hundred out of Social Security. She, for 14 years, had been buying and flipping homes. But in order to manage, she had about 10 to 12 properties that she rented out there in 
Mabolo and Upper Cebu City, she had to be there every two months. And then she would spend a month there, come back. And that's how we did the relationship for two years. So one day, I remember it was on 4th of July, 2011, I'm describing to her on the phone as she's in the Philippines what it's like at this Indian powwow that I had gone to visit for the day there at the reservation. And I asked her, well, when are you going to permanently just come and live here in the, in the United States? And she said, oh, well, never. All my business is in the Philippines. I'm going to live in the Philippines. That's where I'm going to be. And strangely, we had never talked about it. I just kind of assumed everybody wants to live in the United States. So I went to the, the nearby casino. Some of you may know it, the Pachanga there uh, in Temecula, right off the highway there. So I went to what's known as the round bar and I went upstairs with a glass of wine and I told myself I am not going to leave this place until I resolve what I'm going to do about my relationship with this Filipina. I knew that I didn't want to just see her every month on, month off, that whole thing we'd been doing. I didn't want to do that forever. She had no intention of moving to the United States. There's the option of just break up and consider it not workable. And then there was the option of me moving to the Philippines. And the first time that crossed my mind, it was pure insanity. I thought to myself, I don't know anything about the Philippines. I don't know what's there. I'm not even sure how far away it is. And if I lived in the Philippines, what about earning money and all this stuff? So I, I really started having a tough time. It was not an easy decision for me to decide I was going to move to the Philippines. But I was there roughly about two hours. I think I had three glasses of wine. And I finally got up from my chair and told myself, come hell or high water, one year from now, I'm moving to the Philippines. I don't know how I'm going to make it work, but I am going to laser focus everything I can figure out about how I'm going to make money in the Philippines, what I'm going to have to do to get rid of my stuff, what ducks in a row do I have to arrange. But one year from now, back in 2011, I told myself, I'm going to get on a plane, be with her, move to the Philippines, and whatever happens, I'm going to make it work. And for me, this was a go and no coming back type of situation for me. Now, I know a lot of guys, they go and they take a visit first, stay for two, three weeks, check it out, see if they like it, and then they make a decision. I just decided, and I don't, I, I'm not advocating this, don't do what I did. I decided that within one year, I was going to go to the Philippines and basically not have my business to come back to. Again, I do not recommend that. It's just how I do things. It's pretty much 200% or nothing with me. So it was a year and about 11 days later. It was July 14th or so. 2012. And there I was on a plane. I'd never been on an international flight before. I didn't even have to know how to do that. But, you know, I figured it out. And next thing I knew, I'm getting off the plane there at uh, Mokton Airport in Cebu. I'm feeling the hot, humid air. And that was my first day of what became the rest of my life here in the Philippines. So as I look back on it, the transition for me anyways was not overnight. It took a couple years with me. The beginnings and the longings of wanting something more that I couldn't even identify started somewhere deep inside me long before I met this Filipina who finally motivated me to just pick up and move. I knew I wanted something more out of life. I knew I didn't want to just clock in in and clock out until I walked out of that building at 62 or 65 years old, I didn't want to do that. And so that dissatisfaction was like a pebble in my shoe. It just bugged me until finally the right reason came along and then I knew exactly what I wanted to do. Now what I do recommend is do your homework. Back in 2011, if you typed Philippines into YouTube, you got maybe two channels and there was no information there. It was just guys walking around showing the barangay with no commentary. There really wasn't anything to help you make the transition. Nowadays, there are so many channels about the Philippines on YouTube. Your job is to find ones that will educate you and help you, not just throw around a bunch of drama or meaningless little trivial things like, hey, we got a new cat. Check out my cat. What you need is information. So do that. And while everything worked out great for me, 
to just sell everything, get on the plane, and come hell or high water, make it work. I don't really advocate that either because that's how some guys end up broke. Coming to the Philippines without a plan or at the very minimum knowing how you're going to make money is a really bad idea. Really bad. How bad? You might find yourself sleeping on a beach asking people for spare change to buy a hard-boiled egg. That's how bad it can get. So don't do that. Now in closing, I'll say the Philippines is not for everybody. Being an expat is not for everybody. For some guys, Thailand is where it's at. That's where they feel at home, comfortable, they like the lifestyle. For others, it's Vietnam. I have a buddy of mine that uh, he goes into China and Japan a lot because he just can't make up his mind, but he enjoys all three. I have other friends who spend six months in the Philippines, but they maintain their home and, and have a job to come back to the other six months in the United States. So there's many different ways to skin this cat. So don't feel that you have to do all or nothing and just jump into the deep end of the pool like I did. But if you have deep inside you a burning desire to do something more than just wake up and look at the same stuff, talking to the same people that you've been doing for the last 20 years, and you're ready for a change, well, who knows? Maybe the Philippines is something to check out.